What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so I, I know. Look, the talk of the town right now is Steph Curry, 50 points in Game Seven against the Sacramento Kings, the most points ever scored in a Game Seven in playoff history. I understand. And I do believe that right now Steph Curry is on his way, especially if the Warriors can eliminate the Lakers in the second round. You definitely have a case to be made. That maybe Curry is the premier player in the NBA over the past 10 years, uh, 12 years, not LeBron James. Especially if he, if the Lakers uh, lose this series and the Warriors go on to win their fifth championship. Now, as far as how I rank Curry all time, it's gone up a lot. Five years ago, I, I wouldn't even have put Curry in my top 30 because of the way I rank players. Two years ago, I had him um, top 20, like sort of like just outside my top 20. Last year, I had Curry in my top 15. If they win a championship this year, I'm going to have to put Steph Curry in my top 10. All time. No doubt about it. It's, it's, it's just, it'll just be, at that point, I think not putting him in the top 10 if he wins a fifth championship, and especially a second finals MVP, at that point, I think it's just hating on Steph Curry. But can I put him ahead of Magic Johnson? I can't do that. I can't I can't go there yet. I can't. One of the things people got to look at when it comes to Magic Johnson is that he had it as great as he was, as magnificent as his accolades, he had an incomplete career. You got to remember that this is a man that was forced to retire when he was only 32 years old. Steph is 35. 35. Now, of course, Magic had a little small cameo, 95, 96, but he wasn't the same dude. And at that time, I think he was playing power forward, point forward, or whatever. But uh, Magic Johnson is, to me, the most transformative player we've ever seen. Now, Steph Curry definitely has altered and changed the game in ways that we've never seen. I mean, he's popularized the three-point shot, um, for better or for worse, because, you know, you got some guys that are trying to emulate Curry and they can't shoot. But one thing that does have to be remembered is that even though Steph Curry popularized the three-point shot, Analytics had already begun altering the game before Curry's immense popularity began. As, as early as 2010, we were already seeing subtle changes in the NBA game. Like, you know, the three-point shot was starting to be seen more and more uh, by teams. You know, front offices were not as interested in plotting big men like Kendrick Perkins. And they were more interested in these European bigs who are really power forwards that they could use as stretch fives and stretch fours. We started seeing a change then, even 2010, 2011, 2012. But we have never seen a guy like Magic Johnson before or since. Not quite. Not like him. We got to remember, when Magic Johnson... Uh, won that championship in college, uh, the NCAA championship over Larry Bird and his Indiana Sycamores, right? When the Spartans beat the Sycamores. And it was pretty much when it was d determined that the Lakers were going to uh, draft uh, Magic, when they drafted him. Um... Most people assumed that Magic was going to play power forward because the Lakers already had Norm Nixon. You know what I mean? 
Nor Mixon was very, very damn good. All right. Uh, let me go to Norm Nixon right quick. By the way, Norm Nixon's son, his actual son is portraying Norm, or his father, in that HBO series, the Showtime series. That's actually his son, if you didn't know that. But Norm Nixon, for his career, averaged 15.7 points, 8.3 rebounds on 48% shooting from the floor, and 77% from the line. He was a really good damn player. And uh, from 1977 through 19, uh, just look at his numbers, through 86, he averaged 16.4 points, 8.5 assists, and 1.6 steals. And he was at his absolute best from 1978 to... 1985. From 1978 to 1985, Norm Nixon averaged 17 points a game, 8.7 assists, 1.6 deals, 49% shooting, 78% from the foul line. So he was a, a, a more than capable point guard. He was good. So when it was found out that they were going to put him in the backcourt, with Norm Nixon, uh, Magic Johnson, a lot of people was like, "Wait a minute, you can't have a two six foot nine, two hundred twenty pounds playing in the backcourt." First of all, a guy that that big, he's going to have a high dribble. Defensive guards are going to eat him alive. They're going to rake his ass, strip him. He's going to average six, five, six turnovers minimum a game. You can't have that. Then he's probably going to be comparatively slow to the other guards. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's one thing to be gimmicky in college, but the NBA was a position league. You're 6'9", you're 220, you need to be in the front court. You know, you're 20, you're 19, 20 years old. Eventually, you'll fill out, he'll put on some weight, maybe get up to 235, 240, and he'll be a really good power forward that has some passing ability. Maybe he can be like a, a baby Walton. That's how they was thinking. Maybe, you know, he could be a real good passer, Maybe he could, uh, you know, learn some post moves. Uh, maybe he could average something like 20, 10, and 6 or something, right? No. Nope. They were going to put him at the guard position. You got to remember, the first couple of years, Magic played small forward. Uh, excuse me, shooting guard, not, not small forward. He played sh uh, shooting guard while Norm was point guard. In the earlier years, Magic averaged around eight, nine assists. But after they traded Norm Nixon and he took on full-time point guard duties, his assists went way up. But anyway, man, they thought he was going to struggle in the NBA. Magic couldn't shoot very well. Um, every, every nightmare scenario that Ben Simmons fulfilled, many people had those suspicions about Magic Johnson. They didn't realize the competitor this guy was. You know, Magic was a guy that smiled a lot and he had the media savvy down. And even though he was 19, 20 years old, you know, he was raised by his parents to be a very um, respectable young man. He had a, get, a gift of gab. He had electric personality. But he was very, very mature for his age. You know what I mean? He was 20 years old. But his maturity level was something that you would see in, in veterans. You know, now, of course, he did his things off the court. You know, he liked women. But, hey, man, it is what it is. His rookie year, 18 points a game, 7.7 .7 rebounds, 7.3 assists, 2.4 steals. Earlier in his career, Magic used to kind of gamble with steals, you know, uh, trying to get steals. Uh, early in his career, he would lead the NBA in steals, but uh, he used to get burnt defensively doing that. Magic wasn't a great defender, but the things he did well, which was scoring transition, uh, facilitate, and, you know, create plays out of nothing. I mean, he, he, he probably, Magic Johnson, saw the floor better than anybody else that ever played basketball. The only guy I think that 
rival him in that really is John Stockton. Fuck all of this, the hyperbole with LeBron. I mean, he's a good, really good passer, but Magic Johnson, John Stockton were pulling, especially Magic Johnson. Some of the passes that he was pulling off, man, out of his ass was just unbelievable. Then the maturity that he showed in the first NBA Finals his rookie year. Um, the league MVP, Magic Johnson, excuse me, uh, Crypto Jabbar, gets injured in Game 5. Doesn't play in Game 6. The scene shifts to Philly. Philly's down 3-2, but man, they got the momentum now. You know what I mean? They got the momentum. Um, Now the Lakers don't have Kareem. Who is going to step up? And it winds up being this young rookie. It's this young rookie named Magic Johnson. He starts the game at center. Starts the game at center. Out-rebounding the Philadelphia 76ers front line. Shifts over to other positions during the game. Shifts over to small forward. Ends the game, I think, playing point guard. Winds up scoring 42 points, grabbing 15 rebounds, dishing seven assists. That's why I laugh when people say Magic was struggle today. What are you talking about? In this positionless league where defense isn't as important? And Magic would have, to me, Magic would have eventually become a good three-point shooter. I've said this before. In the seasons where Magic took, I think, two or more three-point attempts per game, he shot 38% from three. The years when Michael Jordan took three or more three-point attempts per game, he shot 38% from three. It's the years when they weren't shooting threes, and that wasn't part of their game, (coughs) you know, and it wasn't, and those three-point attempts weren't coming in the natural flow of the game, their percentages dropped because they weren't shooting threes back then. It wasn't important. But as became more important in the late 80s for Magic and more, even more important for Jordan in the 90s, they both became good three-point shooters. Another good indicator of three-point shooting, for Michael Jordan at least off the top of my head, is the finals. Now, Michael is a, what, 32.7% career three-point shooter in the regular season, regular season for his career, but in the finals... 36.8%, 37%. So what is that telling you? But back to Magic, man. Um, wins the championship, wins finals MVP. Goes on to win five NBA championships, nine final appearances. And, and I think the most important, no, not the most important, but the most impressive to me is what he did in 1991. Without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Right, without a so-called super team, post showtime, and also without Pat Riley as coach, because Pat Riley was getting so much credit at that time. Even Pat Riley himself will admit that the press clippings and all of the accolades was getting to his head. He started becoming an egotist. He started really believing that he was showtime. He was the reason why uh, the Lakers were winning. So it was important for Magic Johnson to try to win a championship without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, without Pat Riley, with Mike Dunleavy as head coach. Now, I'm not going to Dunleavy, but he ain't exactly the most legendary coach we've ever seen. And then in that Western Conference Finals uh, series where they were playing the Portland Trailblazers, who were the defending Western Conference champions, and they upset them. If it wasn't for the fact that they were going up against Michael Jordan, in his prime, Scotty Pippen near his prime, the Hungry Bulls team. There was just too much, man. But the fact that Magic took that team to the finals on his back. Now, one knock on Steph Curry, and please, Steph Curry fans, don't don't blow a gasket with me saying this. One of the knocks has been that Steph isn't that successful without Clay. Without Clay, he's never even won a playoff series. Matter of fact, I think without Steph, he's never even been to the playoffs. Now, is that just coincidence? I don't know. 
But for all the things that Magic accomplished, I don't know, man. You got to look at Magic's career. 19.5 points per game, 11.2 assists per game. That's an all-time record. And as a matter of fact, from 1982 to 1991, Magic averaged 20 points a game, 12.2 assists, 52% shooting from the floor, 31% from three, which for the 1980s was not a bad percentage. And he shot 86% from the foul line during that time period. So he went from being an average free throw shooter to being one of the best free throw shooters in the NBA through hard work and dedication. Matter of fact, uh, the last three years of his uh, initial career, 88 to 91, he shot 90.2% from three, uh, excuse me, 90.2% from the line, 49% from the floor, and 34.3% from three. 34.3%, which in the late 80s was a really good three-point percentage. But they'll tell you that Magic couldn't shoot threes. Now, he couldn't do what Steph Curry could do. You know, he couldn't shoot from deep or, you know, shoot off the dribble on, uh, on the move. and the, the degree of difficulties where Steph could, could shoot. But if you leave him open, he could make you pay. During this three-year period, he averaged 21.4 points, 12.3 assists. Magic Johnson led the league in steals two times, 3.4 a game in 81 and 2.7 a game in 82. He led the NBA in assists four times for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive years. He averaged at least 10 assists. Per game. Matter of fact, during that, that, that period of time, he, he didn't average lower. The lowest he ever averaged was 11.5. No, excuse me, it was 10.5 and 82.83. That's the lowest that he ever averaged during that time period. Um, I don't even want to go through all the accolades, man. Five NBA championships, three finals MVPs, uh, Three league MVPs. I mean, we, we, we know all the accolades at this point, man. We don't need to go through all of it. One of the things that does pique my interest, though, is if he was able to have the career that he wanted to have. Because you got to remember, in the early 90s, Bird was breaking down physically. Magic was going strong. Had it not been for him attaining that virus, he would have played for several more years. You got to remember, man, if, if you if you really remember, Magic was balling during that preseason. He was balling. He was, he was literally putting up triple-doubles like every other night. He had a triple-double in Utah. And then, I think if I remember correctly, he, got, he felt kind of sick in Utah. He had flu-like symptoms. He thought he just had the flu or something. That's when he got tested, and that's when they called him back and found out the terrible news. This is a guy that was going to play at least three or four more years at a high level. He was not slowing down at all, really. He was getting better offensively. His jump shot was getting better. He was, he was shooting from range better. He was a great free throw shooter. Of course, the last six years of his career or so, uh, six, seven years, he was adding, he had adding the jump hook. You know, he, he was a guy that could be a scorer. Matter of fact, remember that game against the Warriors in 91 when he dropped 44 points? So he was a guy that, that was expanding his game, getting better. And I really, truly believe that if he was still there in 1992-93, I think that Barkley would have went to the Sun, uh, the Lakers, excuse me, instead of the Suns. I really do believe that. And if he was playing with Charles Barkley, Magic Johnson, his assists would have went up. He would have started leading the league in assists again over John Stockton. His scoring would have went down a little bit, but he would have been a beast. And maybe he could have won a couple of more championships. And if he won a couple more championships, and we're talking about six, seven championships, I know this would have, could have, should have. But I do believe if he played with Charles Barkley, he would have won at least one more championship. And then if he won another championship or two, now we're talking about six or seven championships. Now we're talking about... 
10 11 NBA final appearances. Now we're having a real actual discussion about whether or not Magic Johnson not only the greatest point guard of all time, but indeed the GOAT. So yeah, I can't go there yet with Steph. I, I, I can't go there off of this 50 point performance. Now, if they go on and win a championship and, you know, Steph has five championships and two finals MVPs, now I'm really starting to think about it now. Now I'm starting to think about, well, okay, do we really do we have a debate now about this? Is this something that is debatable? And I would say, yeah. But I don't want to go there yet. Not quite yet. But anyway, tell me what you guys think. Plus, oh yeah, before I, before I finish that, I didn't even touch on the impact that Magic Johnson had within the NBA. That 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 is something I didn't even touch on. As popular as Steph Curry is, and I did a video on my other channel telling you about how Steph has been featured in every game, virtually every game that the, the NBA's got high ratings. Yes, but Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. When they say that they saved the NBA, they mean that. Like, at the rate the NBA was going in the 70s, the league would have contracted. They would have had to have, um, some franchise would have had to fold eventually. Some of your favorite chan uh, favorite teams would have had to fold and, you know, uh, sell or just pretty much just quit altogether. Uh, I think if the league had continued to struggle, there would have been more and more of a push to create a league, to uh, or recreate a league to compete against the NBA. Um, the NBA was headed toward financial ruin. And then comes Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And when I say the NBA popularity improved dramatically, I used to have the numbers in front of me, man, but Put it like this. The NBA went from tape delay on ABC to CBS, where some of those games between the Boston Celtics and the Lakers, they were getting 25, 30 million viewers in the 80s. Okay? In the 80s. Salaries exploded. In 1979, a superstar probably was making about 540000 a year. Magic was the first $1 million player. By 85, players was making $2 million a year. By 1990, you had some guys making 4 or $5 million a year. That's a tenfold increase in salaries. That's like a guy who's making $50 million now in 10 years making 500 million a year that's the type of increase we saw in the NBA in the 80's Magic was the most popular player in the NBA at least I would say from 87 uh, well I'd say from 85 to 80 <coughs> 88 89 me personally, now, yeah, there could be some. There could be some just debate about that, but Magic was that man, man. But anyway, that's just my opinion, man. Tell me what you guys think.